Hi everyone, this is Ron Guth and I'd like to welcome you to the channel. Today I'm presenting an 1852 $5 gold piece from the firm of Wass, Molitor & Company in San Francisco. This coin was minted during the gold rush at a time when gold coinage was very scarce in California. Miners had difficulty doing transactions because they only had gold dust to pay with. So let's say, for instance, that they walked into a bar and said, I'd like to order a drink. The bartender would say that costs one pinch. Well, a pinch would be whatever the bartender could get when he reached into the miner's bag of gold dust with his thumb and forefinger and pull out whatever he could. Obviously, the bars would hire bartenders that had massive thumbs and massive fingers so that they could get as much gold as possible, but that really wasn't fair to the miners. So what happened was a lot of private companies came into existence and they were creating gold coins by assaying and converting the gold miner's dust into coins. The coins were supposed to bring some sort of standardization to the problem, but what happened was some of the private gold coiners were making coins that were either underweight or somewhat debased. So there again, the miners were still getting cheated. The problem was resolved until 1854 when the U.S. government came in and started the first mint at San Francisco. And by doing so, they created the new standard and drove all the old money or the old gold coins, the debased coins, out of circulation. And most of them, many of them, were destroyed. You'll notice that this Wass Molitor $5 gold piece looks an awful lot like a standard U.S. $5 gold piece from 1852. The differences are that the headband, instead of bearing the word liberty, shows the initials W M ampersand CO for Wass Molitor and Company. The reverse is also different. Instead of saying United States of America, it says in California gold or $5 in California gold. Everything else looks pretty much the same. And part of that was to help to improve their acceptance in circulation. This coin was graded AU50 by PCGS. It came out of the Lewis Eliasberg collection in 1996. Now those of you who are familiar with my channel know that I love the Lewis Eliasberg collection because it was the first and only collection of complete United States coins ever built. Now Eliasberg also collected territorial gold coins, patterns, some of the odd stuff from the back of the book so to speak, but he also collected world gold coins and he had a phenomenal collection of those as well. This coin was graded very fine 35 in 1996. By 2014, it reappeared in a Heritage Fund sale as a PCGS XF45, where it sold for $35,000. That's about seven times what it sold for in 1996. It sold again later in 2014 after it had been upgraded to a PCGS AU50. It sold for the exact same price of $35,250 in a Long Beach signature sale in uh, September of 2014. The last time it's appeared on the market was in March of 2017 when it sold in a Kagan sale, same holder, PCGS AU50. This time it sold for about $8,000 less when it brought 27025 To my knowledge, it has not appeared on the market since, but I suspect that if it did, it would probably bring a little bit more money today because the market is so much stronger in 2023. The coin appears to be in original condition with nice color and surfaces. It has a minor defect on the rim at 8 o'clock on the obverse. And on the reverse, there are some little read marks, contact marks in the field to the right and above of the eagle's head. Condition-wise, this is one of the finer examples. The best example that I'm aware of is a PCGS MS60. There's also an AU55 PCGS. And then there are two PCGS AU50. So this is tied for third place for the type. If you like content like this, please be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that anytime I post a new video, YouTube will let you know. And don't forget to leave a comment or a question below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.